Mixcraft's mixer section is where audio and MIDI tracks are routed. It lets you easily combine, pan, EQ, and add effects to projects. You can access it by clicking the Mixer tab right here at the bottom. And here's the mixer. If you've ever used a hardware mixer for recording or live audio, most of the controls should look familiar. If you've never used an audio mixer, don't be scared by all the controls because mixers really just have a few controls that get replicated a bunch of times for each audio channel. The most basic function of a mixer is to adjust volumes of each individual input source. Mixer channel sources can include audio tracks with Mixcraft loops, or recordings you've made, or tracks containing virtual instrument MIDI performances. Individual mixer channels are often referred to as channel strips. Let's have a look at one and go over its controls starting at the bottom. At the very bottom is the name of the track and these correspond directly to tracks in the main window right here. Next is the main volume slider. If I move this up and down, you can see that the slider up here moves as well. Directly to the right of the volume slider is a track level meter, and if I play back a track, you'll see the meters move. In this case, I've got it a little too hot because you can see the red lights are lighting up, so I can pull the volume down a little bit. Directly above that is a panning control, which pans the sound right and left. If I play back and move it, Listen to the drum beat. The input pop-up over here defines the input signal source for the track. If the channel is an audio track, then the input will represent a physical jack input on your audio interface hardware. Usually you'd set this for tracks in the track list by clicking on the down arrow over here, but it can be set in either place. If the track is a MIDI virtual instrument or an external MIDI instrument, Input usually defines a hardware USB or MIDI interface input, and like audio inputs, you usually set it in the track itself in the main track window list. For example, here's a MIDI input over here, and I'm using a Fire Studio project, which is why it says Project MIDI, so it's showing the inputs here, and it's the same as the ones over here. The numbers right here indicate the track number, and these correspond directly to the tracks in the main track window, 1, 2, 1, 2, and so forth. The little icons with the sliders on them indicate channels controlled by an external hardware fader controller. We'll talk more about this in another video. The arm button readies a track for recording and turns red when activated. The monitor button that appears when a track is armed lets you use software monitoring to monitor signals through your audio system as audio is recording. The solo button plays only this channel, so for example, if I was playing this mix back, and I press solo, we just hear these drums. You can solo multiple tracks at once. In this way, you can make a custom soloed mix. The mute button functions opposite of the solo button and lets you shut off certain tracks temporarily. So if I press play, my drums go away and they turn gray. And again, I can mute as many tracks as I like. The mixer's arm solo and mute buttons have the same functionality as the ones in the track list, but having them in the mixer just gives you another convenient place to access them. The blue high, mid, and low knobs offer basic equalization for tonal sculpting. You can see they're in the zero position right now, but if I turn one up, more highs, less highs, more low, so forth. These are really handy, but if you have more complex EQ needs, you can always use a fancier EQ plugin in the effects insert. The effects button lets you add effects such as compressors, EQ, or delay into the channel by clicking on it. When you click on it, you'll see this effects list window pop up, and in this case I've got a couple effects already added. We'll talk more about using insert effects in another video, but for now it's just good to know that the effects button will glow green when insert effects are in use. All the way to the right is a main mix bus over here, and this controls the master volume of the entire mix. This has a couple controls that correspond up here too. The main volume corresponds with this volume over here. And the main mix bus also has its own separate EQ and an effects insert button that's really handy for adding things like compressors and limiters and master EQs. So if I press play, you can control the level of the entire mix, which you can see moves over here as well. And I can insert effects if I like. And you'll see the effects button glows here as well. To the right is a master meter, which again corresponds to the meter here. And it's important to watch this guy because this is your master output level. So you don't want to let this get into the red too much, otherwise your entire mix could be distorted or clipped.